The first day of test broadcast of television episodes for distance learning did not go smoothly. Filipinos online criticized the Department of Education over glaring and painful grammar errors spotted on TV. In one of the episodes aired Tuesday, a grammatical error was spotted in a sample questionnaire for a grade 8 level English course. In a statement, the DepEd promises to improve the TV episodes, saying the test run was, quote, more focused on the technical aspect of the broadcasting. The DepEd started a test broadcast of educational programs on Tuesday, August 11, and will run until August 21. This follows technical glitches that marred the launch of the school readiness program Monday morning, August 10. There were also reports teachers still did not have copies of the self-learning modules ahead of school opening. The DepEd has been criticized for pushing for the opening of classes in the middle of a health crisis. Education Secretary Leonor Briones said classes will begin on August 24 in whatever form. The Duterte Coronavirus Task Force takes a new step to try to arrest the spread of COVID-19 by assigning cabinet members to monitor specific Metro Manila cities and the provinces of Bulacan, Cavite, Rizal, and Laguna. The assignments are meant to provide stronger support to local government units with areas identified with high community transmission. Here are the assignments of the cabinet members. Malacanang clarifies the cabinet members won't have powers over their mayors and governors and are just there to help. Ay, wala naman po, no? Dahil wala naman pong mandato ang IIT, ang mga kabinete na susuporta lang sa mga local government units. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque calls the deputized cabinet members the big brothers and big sisters of their assigned cities and provinces. Pero mga big brothers nga po at big sister na sinasabi ni uh, Secretary Galvez, suporta lang po kami sa mga lokal na pamahalaan. Sila pa rin po ang mamumuno sa kanila kanilang mga syudad at munisipyo. Meanwhile, a female traveler from the Philippines is among the 14 new coronavirus cases in New Zealand. Based on the Ministry of Health website, 4 out of 12 cases in managed isolation in the first two weeks of August were travelers from the Philippines. These imported cases come as New Zealand battles a new spike in community cases, breaking its 102-day streak of having no community cases of COVID-19. Meanwhile, the Philippines already laid out a schedule for Russia's COVID-19 vaccine Sputnik V, targeting to conduct clinical trials involving thousands of Filipinos starting October. In the schedule, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte is expected to get injected with a vaccine on May 1, 2021 at the earliest. As of Thursday, the Philippines has 4,002 new coronavirus cases, bringing the total to 147,526. State health insurer PhilHealth suspends the implementation of the Interim Reimbursement Mechanism or IRM with hospitals amid allegations of corruption in the program. In a statement Thursday, August 13, PhilHealth says it will, quote, review its overall implementation and resolve issues arising from congressional inquiries. The IRM is a program that advances the reimbursement of members' insurance claims to hospitals and clinics directly hit by fortuitous events, supposedly cutting long lines and tedious bureaucratic process. The Senate hearing on Tuesday, August 11, revealed disparities in IRM releases. The Southern Philippines Medical Center in Davao City received the highest share of all hospitals in the country at 326 million pesos, even if the Davao region, which it served, ranked only sixth among regions with the highest number of COVID-19 cases. The dialysis clinic chain B. Braun Avitum already received 45 million pesos in April, even if it does not handle COVID-19 patients. PhilHealth denies any irregularity. The Ayala Corporation, the Philippines' oldest and largest conglomerate, suffers a 79% drop in its earnings in the first half of 2020. Net income plunged to 7.9 billion pesos from 37.8 billion pesos last year, mainly due to the pandemic's impact on its banking and real estate businesses. But Ayala Corporation CEO Jaime Augusto Zobel de Ayala still sees opportunities ahead. He says, quote, 
While the health crisis has stifled the momentum of some of our businesses, we have started to see positive trends in the operations of BPI, Globe, and Ayala Land since the easing of quarantine restrictions in June. Zobel notes the pandemic accelerated the country's digital adoption, particularly in financial services. The National Bureau of Investigation files complaints of murder, kidnapping, and planting of guns and drugs against 11 officials of the San Jose del Monte Police, including its Drug Enforcement Chief, Police Major Leo de la Rosa. On February 14, 2020, the policemen kidnapped passersby, made them out to be drug suspects, killed them on separate instances, and fabricated stories of them fighting back. The night before, the police conducted a by-bust operation against Edwin Macapanas and apprehended him and four others. The NBI's complaint transmitted to the Department of Justice says Macapanas and company would later be charged for violation of the anti-drug law, but it's the passersby who were killed in succeeding nights. Six passersby outside Macapanas' house were, quote, flagged down, searched by the operatives before they were forcibly made to board the white van used by the operatives in their anti-illegal drugs operations. The NBI says the passersby were blindfolded, hogtied, detained, pending the inclusion of their names in the Pedea PNP Unified Drugs Watch. Later, the NBI confirmed with the office of the city vice mayor of San Jose del Monte that all six were not found in their database as drug personalities watch list for the years 2017 and 2018. NBI chemistry reports show the suspects tested negative for gunpowder nitrates, belying the police allegation of the men fighting back. (laughs) 